Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Review and Review. And today we have the Google Pixels. Before we dive into this, I just realized that, you know, I have never actually showed everyone what is my phone setup. I use three phones every day in my daily life. One would be my iPhone 8 Plus. I cannot get rid of the home button. I just need that home button. When I'm angry, I spam it. When the phone starts lagging a little, I spam it. Also, this is my main phone which I use for work. All my WhatsApp contacts are here. My whole life of photo albums are in here. This is also my wallet. Yes. I, I bring along my credit cards here. Moving on to my second and third phone. Because we do so many reviews, right? Mm -hmm. I have to test out the phones. Correct, so correct. this is an iPhone XS Max. I use this for photos. This is just pretty much a duplicate of my normal work phone. However, without the WhatsApp. And of course, when you go overseas, this is the phone that I put my SIM card in. My other phone is the Android. Okay. Now, I've, I've been using Android uh, recently. I've tried it on the Oppo, the Huawei, and now I'm using the Google Pixel 3 XL. I've been using this for about a week now, and mm -hmm. I have to say this. I love this phone. The camera is great and yes. that's exactly what we're going to dive down in this episode. So I was in New York last week for the Google Keynote. You know, if you watch the Keynote on YouTube, you would have seen me in the background. I was there, I was there for the Keynote and Google launched three things. The Google Pixel and the Pixel XL. <laughs> the Google Pixel Slate and the Google Home Hub. Now the Google Home Hub and the Pixel Slate it's not available in Singapore yet, but we'll be the first ones to let you know once it's out. So Google launched three different colors for the Google Pixel 3. There is just black, clearly white, and not pink. And in my opinion, I think it's the most creative way to name the colors because it's super sarcastic and I love it. So for everyone in Singapore, the Pixels will be out on the 1st of November. You can get the Pixel 3 starting from $1,249 and you can get the Google Pixel 3 XL starting from $1,399. So I really like the design of the phone. The back is full glass. On top, there's a slightly glossier finish as compared to the matte, the finish matte below finish. Here. However, there has been a few photos online. This is actually pretty prone to scratches. Yeah. Like if you put it in your pocket or put it in your bag, anywhere with keys, anywhere with something sharp. So, you need to protect it. Yeah, you should probably your... get yourself a case. I yeah. mean, that's the simplest solution to this. Ooh. So, you, this is a case from Otterbox. This is a case, you know, one of those clothed yes, cases okay. that uh, Google is so well known for now. So, these come in different colors, but black, on black, just a perfect fit. Ta-da! So I've seen people say that this is an ugly phone because of the notch. Mm -hmm. However, I think that design-wise, it is sleek. They moved the SIM card to the bottom, which yep. means the whole left part of the phone is completely flushed and clean. Google really believes in the front-facing speakers, so they actually moved the bottom speaker to the front. However, Google claims that because of these two front-facing speakers, you can now have 40% higher volume. I think I should start using Pretty this phone impressive. as my alarm. I think so. Maybe. Yeah, Maybe since it's you might another. actually wake up for work. <laughs> <laughs> so there's another thing that I'd like to clarify that there's no headphone jacks. But that doesn't matter because Google also included a headphone inside the box. So when Google launched the Pixel 2 last year, there has been a few notable problems. Especially with the XL version, you know, with the screen, oh, yeah. the color. And then it's all been fixed this year with the Pixel 3. The Pixel 3, actually uses a Samsung OLED. This has been uh, discovered when I fix it, I think they opened up the phone, they tore it up and they found a Samsung OLED screen. So Samsung is currently the leader in the industry for OLED screens on a smartphone. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting that Google chose Samsung rather than the previous uh, LG screens. Let's talk about the notch. So the reason there's a notch is because Google has actually added two cameras in the front. But for some reason, it's just really huge. It looks like a face. Everyone's been saying it looks like a face. It does look like a yeah, face. It and it's like really hard to ignore at first glance. However, after uh, using it for a while, I'm actually used to it. And I wouldn't say that I'm very disturbed with the notch. So the smaller phone does not have a notch, nope. but the XL does. However, the notch can be disabled. All you have to do is head down to your settings, go to system and click on your about phone and tap on your about phone. Go all the way down to your build number. Here, you have to actually tap it six, seven or eight times. So, bum, 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 four. It's actually pretty difficult. You have to Google this. And there you go. You turned on developer options and scroll all the way to the display cutout. Under display cutout, just hide it 
And ta-da, no more notch. However, I've been using the Pixel 3 XL with the notch and without the notch. And I have to mm -hmm. say, I, I turned it off mm -hmm. and I actually turned it back on. Why? Because after a while, you just no longer notice the notch. Honestly, it does look better in real life than on video because on video, all you focus is on the notch. But when you actually use the phone, use it for your daily activities, daily apps, you no longer notice it. Or that's at least how I've been feeling about the notch. So what you're trying to say is that it actually just takes time getting used to. I mean, yeah, it, it takes it like an weird. hour. It takes like one hour. It's weird after at first. an hour, you're used to it. All right, so now we're gonna dive into the camera and its features and what you can do on the Google Pixel 3. Yes, that's right. The Google Pixel 3's camera is what makes it so unique. Alright, so based on hardware, there is a singular 12 megapixel camera at the back here, and there are two 8 megapixel frontal camera. Which compared to the Google Pixel 2 last year, there was also a singular 12 megapixel camera. Yes, but the difference comes in its software and the AI that Google is so well known for. So it's the camera on the Google Pixel 3 that really puts this phone as one of the top phones in the market out there right now, along with iPhone XS, Samsung Galaxy S9, Samsung Note 9, whatever. <laughs> And I really like how the camera uses HDR to combine multiple exposures to boost the dynamic range of photos. So now we're going to dive into the camera features and the first one we're going to be talking about is the top shot. Yes, which uses Google AI to select and suggest the best image out of your burst of photos. Those times when you take a photo and somebody blinks or you blink or a special moment, maybe you meet a celebrity, you only get one chance to make a difference oh, yeah. but you take a photo where either a celebrity or yourself close your eye i actually have seen that happen with some people when oh, they take no. photos of me so and sad. i sometimes i want to say it but when they take two photos it's all right but sometimes yeah. when you when you're just in the moment it's very hard for me to say hey you want to take another one because it's a little weird so for your top shot to function the first thing you need to do is turn on your motion they actually record a live photo so it's like yeah. a few frames of you doing a certain movement and the google ai will choose the best photo for you. So another thing you can do on the Pixel is group selfies. Now you no longer need to get a tall guy with a long hand like Ridwan to hold the <laughs> camera so that everyone can fit because now you can actually see 184% wider than normal. So you no longer need a selfie stick. Now for me, this is not my favorite feature because honestly, I find it really weird. You know this, yeah. yes, even yes. when I vlog, even when I shoot videos, right? I try to avoid wide lens. I just don't like how it distorts yeah. the photo on the side. So another feature that's worth mentioning is motion autofocus. So you can now actually focus on an object and wherever it moves, it will just keep focusing on it. And this is perfect for me because whenever I take photos or videos of my dog, Buncha, who happens to enjoy running around, this will just keep it focused on her. So another cool feature is the photo booth. Now what it does is that it captures a photo based on your facial expression. So if you make a funny face, a funky face, or you're smiling, it will just automatically snap a photo. So you don't yes. have to actually uh, press, press it. This again is not my favorite feature. It's more like a, to me it's more like a gimmick, you know? It's like that one time you had to do this. All right, the hand a, motion. To take, a, to take a photo. Personally, I'm, I'm okay with just pressing the button mm -hmm. in, at, at the moment. I think for me, I would probably use it during like Hari Raya when a big family comes on because no one can ever stretch their hand that far. Just smile. And you don't even need to wait for a timer. There's no timer. Okay. It's an instant snap. The fifth feature that we want to talk about is Super Res Zoom. Now, as you can see, there is only one camera at the back. Obviously, with dual camera, it's better for optical zoom. However, with a single rear camera, it creates a better quality digital zoom. Because Google actually uses its AI from your handshake to identify, I don't know why I'm trying to explain AI, but basically, you know, you know how it works. Basically, you get the okay. eye. Okay, you don't know I don't, I don't. Okay, fine. Let really? me explain. It's AI uses your handshake to see the 3D version of whatever you're taking a photo and then uses its AI to craft it into a higher resolution photo. Does that make sense? Are you sure? Because that sounds like super futuristic. That is, yeah, this phone is five years ahead of its time. So another feature is Night Sight, where Google brightens images from dark scenes. However, this is not available yet. Nope, not so yet. we'll actually have to test it out once it's out yes. to uh, testify how good it is. And the next feature we're going to talk about is the portrait mode. Now, what makes this portrait mode stand out, you may ask? Well, this is because you are able to adjust 
the amount of bokeh you want in your picture. You can adjust the bokeh from your front camera and your rear camera. And this is one more feature which I probably won't use, but maybe some will yeah, yeah, use. Yeah, honestly, honestly, ever since portrait mode has been introduced, I've never really enjoyed using it. To me, as someone who handles a lot of DSLRs and professional cameras, I always feel that portrait mode cannot compare to DSLRs when taking humans. Yes. When it comes to products objects. or objects like a cookie, a box, I think it's perfect Correct. to have portrait mode. However, when it comes to human, I think portrait mode, the way it handles hair, the distortion, yes. it's, just, it's, just not, it's just not good enough for me. I feel like the human is just pasted on a blur image. That's what it feels like, honestly. But that is only us because we handle so much professional equipment. But I think for the normal consumer, right, portrait mode is amazing. And yes. especially when it's very well lit, I think uh, it can work very well. All right, and the next feature we're going to talk about is the playground. Now, playground is an augmented reality or yes. AR. You are able to put in stickers, characters and text and they will just stick around on yeah. your camera. And Google's working with Marvel for this, so you can put Iron Man, you can put the Hulk. Hulk. Uh, honestly, AR, no, I, I don't cool. see myself ever really using it in my daily life. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's fun to try out for a while. And of course, Google Lens, which comes in so handy whenever it comes to really copying text. Like, you get a paper, use Google Lens, you get all the text and you can edit it on your phone. I think that's very useful to basically people doing work, homework or yes. in, in, in your work life, it's very useful. For me, I think there's a different use because, you know, when you suddenly see someone with a very nice shirt, you'll be like, oh, dude, let me check it out. To see whether it's fake or not, you know, so you check it, whether it's fake, aha! Is yeah, how much is it really worth? How much worth? is he worth on his body right now? <laughs> yeah, but for me, not for me. Yeah, the text thing though is good for me. Yes, good the text me. thing yeah. and how it can even link it to websites. Yes. If there's a website, it can actually be clickable. I think we should talk about selfies. It does have the features where you soften your face, all the beauty features, Beautify. right? But when it comes to taking a selfie, it is so sharp. It's so sharp that it's actually a little scary because you can see all the uh. imperfections on your face. The selfie camera for me is like a good friend because a good friend will tell you the truth. So you say, oh my god, I actually look ugly today. Your, your camera is actually telling the truth. Yeah, you do look ugly today. So overall, I think the Pixel 3 has a better camera when it comes to taking still and regular images. Alright, so overall, what do you like about the phone? Overall, definitely the camera itself. The camera. I've been an avid Android user. I think that this whole new OS is very user-friendly with the whole... Yeah, it's so user-friendly by the way. You know, up. usually yep. when you look at Android phones at a shop, if you are an iPhone user especially, we can relate. You walk into a shop and you see all these Android phones on display. It's so intimidating because of its menu and like all the apps. But when it comes to the Pixel, it makes things so simple. It seems familiar, I think. One button to clear all yes. the apps. Familiar. Yeah, I think, I think that's the word. When you use the Pixel 3, I think there is a sense of familiarity even if you are an iPhone user. Yes, that's true. It's hard to find a thing where you particularly don't like about the Pixel 3. Maybe the specifications is not as high as other phones in the market, mm -hmm. but Google optimizes it, of course, because it's Android and they know how to optimize Android on their phone. So yep. maybe that is why you don't have such a high uh, specifications as compared to other phones. I think the one thing I don't like about this phone is just this. It's just the, the colour of small the thing, right? power button. It's, yeah, it's it, a very it, small it, thing. It does not affect your decision to buy this phone or not, <laughs> but it's just like a, it's like a little mosquito <laughs> bite. You know, it's like a... Uh. Let's talk about the memory. Mm -hmm. It comes in 64 gigabytes and 128 gigabytes. Compared to the iPhone's 512 or 256, that is actually significantly lower. And the bad thing is that it's non-expendable. In my opinion, right, I do not not need 128 gigabyte. Even though my iPhone XS is a 512 gigabyte, I think currently I use 100 gigabytes because everything is on the cloud. So even though the memory storage on the Google Pixel 3 isn't significantly large, but Google offers you an online unlimited storage on Google Photos. But of course, as filmmakers and photographers, you would always want more offline storage. So let us know in the comments below if you think that 64 or 128 gigs are enough. So that's it for our review on the Google Pixel 3. Let us know if you agree or disagree in the comments section below. Yep, and do remember to subscribe to us and do comment down below on what other phones you like us to review. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.